Welcome back to another Color Grade School tutorial. In this video, we will be using Final Cut Pro to color grade this shot of an interview to give it a natural punchy look. Let's get started. This shot came from a Sony A7S III using the S-Log3 color profile. We will grade this shot in three simple steps. We will start by applying a conversion LUT to bring the image to a Rec. 709 color space. Then we will add a bit of contrast to the image by darkening the shadows a bit more and bringing up the highlights. We will also use a magnetic mask to make a few adjustments to the background to make the subject stand out. And lastly, we will use the hue saturation curves to correct the skin tone. Step 1. Let's begin by adding our S-Log3 to Rec. 709 conversion LUT. In the Effects tab, click Color. Then, Custom LUT. And we'll select the S-Log3 to Rec. 709 conversion LUT. This LUT brings our image to a Rec. 709 color space. Rec. 709 is a color standard that makes sure images look the same on different screens to keep colors accurate and consistent. LUTs like the one I applied can be downloaded in the description below so you can apply it to your S-Log3 footage if you shoot with Sony cameras like the A7S III. Step 2. Now that the conversion LUT has been applied, our image looks normal with standard colors, but we will add some contrast to give it a slight punchy look. Click on the color inspector icon, then click color adjustments. We will slightly increase the exposure by moving the exposure slider to the right. Then we will darken the darkest parts of the image by moving the black point slider to the left. We can see the difference it makes in contrast by turning off the color adjustment tab and turning it back on. Now let's add a bit more separation between the subject and the background by darkening the background just a bit and removing some saturation. To do this, we will need to add a magnetic mask so that the adjustments only affect the background and not the subject. Let's click on the color inspector and add a color board effect. Click on the mask icon and select magnetic mask. We will create four points on the subject to ensure that the mask makes a good selection. Once our subject is selected, click the analyze button to automatically track the subject throughout the clip. When the tracking is complete, click the mask icon on the color board we created our magnetic mask and click invert mask. Then click done. Now any adjustments in exposure or color that we make will only affect the background and not the subject. Let's darken the background a bit to make the subject stand out from the background. In the Exposure tab, click the shadows and bring them down slightly, then the midtones. Now click on the Saturation tab. Let's bring down the global saturation slightly so that the image doesn't take away our attention from the subject by being too saturated. We can compare the before and after to see how the subject stands out from the background now that the adjustment has been made. This part is subjective, so if you feel it's not necessary, you can just skip step number two altogether and move on to step number three. Step three, correcting the skin tone. To ensure we have accurate skin tones, there are many methods. In a future video, I will go over the many ways to correct the skin tones, but for this video, I will teach you a very simple way to do it. We will need the vector scope to guide us, so we will begin by clicking the view icon in our scopes window and selecting a single display to get a large view of the vector scope. If you don't see the vector scope, click the scope setting icon and select vector scope. Now click on the color inspector icon and add a hue saturations curve adjustment. Click on the mask icon and click add shape mask. Now shape the mask on a portion of the skin. To isolate the skin, Click the View Masks button. This will display only what's inside the mask, which allows us to see where the skin color falls in relation to the skin tone line in the vector scope. By looking at our vector scope, we see that it is almost directly on the line, but it points a bit more towards red and magenta. This is a tiny adjustment, but in other shots, you'll need to make more drastic adjustments, and this is a great method to correct skin tones. Now, click on the color picker in the Hue versus Hue curve. Then click on a portion of the skin we isolated with the mask. You can see the points created on the hue curve. Click the middle point and move it down to remove some of the red in the skin. We are using the skin tone line in the vector scope to guide us and we can see that now the skin tone color falls right on the skin tone line indicating that the skin tone is accurate. Click view masks to view the entire image again. Our image is now complete. Let's take a look at the before and after. Thank you guys for tuning in and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more easy color grading tutorials just like this one. This is Color Grade School and we'll see you in the next one.